for assalamu alaikum brother levon x of brother levon x community reporting thank you for joining the part of the program i hope that everything's all well with you and the family but speaking of family we gotta make our family much tighter in our community we cannot uh, expect those to see value in our community if we don't see value in it ourselves. But the beautiful thing is we have a lot of beautiful people out there in the front line we want to give a shout out to that are out in the forefront uh, doing the unseen work that the media definitely won't bring attention to, but we see it. And if you're active in the community, you will see a lot of people out there telling our brothers and sisters that you are loved, you are appreciated, you have value and once we learn how to love one another love ourselves we can see value in that but we have to do something and to curve this homicide of us uh being at the hand of our own demise and yes you have other communities uh who may have similar problems but i'm addressing my community because i want us to make sure that you know we take accountability for our actions and this is not to talk down this is not to talk a negative negatively about our community but you know there's a lot of hurt families out there uh mothers wives children who lost their father behind senseless violence in the hands of another black man one of the things that we taught in the nation of islam when you see a black man you see god and that when you see your brother you want for your brother that you want for yourselves and most of us and a lot of us should want life and prosperity and happiness so let's strive to work hard to want that love for one another so we can build prosper and grow let's use intelligence to solve our problems instead of going to uh the extreme of taking another man's life for a disagreement that probably wasn't even worth taking that man's life let's see value in that so without further ado we want to bring the honorable minister louis farrakhan this beautiful clip when he was speaking in boston talking to black men and it's good for us to have these classrooms for black men to have because we have a lot of unresolved issues that we must talk to one another to build each other up. And that's the beauty about uh, the Nation of Islam that we have men's class where we can talk about those issues and see value and see each other as brothers and how to solve problems better without going to the extreme of uh, wanting to hurt your brother because we can't find an intelligent way to solve problems. So without further ado, we'll bring the Honorable Mr. Lewis Farrakhan in this clip, a lot of jewels in this, and please take notes. And if you want to hear more of the Honorable Mr. Lewis Farrakhan giving the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, please tune in to www.noi.org or you can listen to 24-7 around the clock content on finalcarradio.com where you can hear all the lectures and the times that we are in now and see the beauty that we have in our nation of Islam, which is your nation as well. So without further ado, the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan, may God continue to bless you all. Peace. Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. The one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. The creator of all things, the revealer of all truth, and the sender of all prophets. To Allah alone do I submit and seek refuge. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the Gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Quran. Peace be upon all of these worthy servants of God. But I personally thank him most of all for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, yes, the great Mahdi. We thank him for his coming and for his search among us yes, 
to find one worthy to carry a weighty word mm -hmm. that would deliver our people. And that one whom he found is the man whom I represent. Yes, sir. A divine leader, a divine teacher, a divine guide, yes, his messenger to us, the Messiah, yes, sir. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. I greet all of you, my dear brothers, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. To Minister Don, distinguished platform guests and leaders, to our distinguished brothers, it is a great honor and privilege for me to be back home tonight in Boston. Sir. To do something that I don't believe has ever been done before in the history of our sojourn in America. That is, that a black man would call together black men yes. to discuss the future of us as a people. This call is not meant to discriminate against women. Right, right. For without women, none of us would right. be present. That's right. Our beloved mothers, living or dead, have anguished in their lives over the suffering of their children. That's right. Particularly the suffering of the black male. To the women who are outside who were very, very disturbed because they wanted to see their brother too. We say to you that until and unless we strengthen the black man right. Come on. Yes, sir. and make the black man what God intended for him to be. There will be no family. There will be no real progress for us as a people. And since the morgues of America are not being filled with white women or white men, but the morgues of America are being filled with black men. That's right. That's right. Black men killed predominantly by black men. Right. So since we have become a problem to ourselves right. and a problem to the nation, yes, sir. it is nothing but right and fitting that a brother from among yourself who grew up among you, who knows your pain and your hurt, yes, sir. that that brother should come and talk to his brothers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That we may go out of here tonight better men than we came in yes, sir. with a greater resolve to make a difference yes, in our lives and in the lives of our wives, our children, our grandchildren. Yes, sir. You represent the power to make change and to make it real. Yes, sir. But you cannot make that change until a change comes right. in you. Yes.
in the Holy Quran, in the Holy Quran, Allah says, No people, or rather Allah, will never change the condition of a people until they change themselves. The condition of our people is not going to change unless a change comes over us. But change just doesn't happen. There is a force that brings change about. I want to change in my life and I want to change in your life. Not one for the worse, but one for the better. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, A man is not a Muslim, he's not a righteous person, until he wants for his brother what he wants for himself. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that this planet on which we live, 7,926 miles in diameter, 24,896 miles in circumference, with a weight of six sectillion tons, 57,255,000 square miles of land, and 139,685,000 square miles of water. And everything that is on the earth comes up out of the earth. Yes, sir. And this is why the weight of the earth is constant. All of the skyscrapers that you see in downtown Boston and New York were once under our feet. But somebody knew how to take matter from the earth and form it according to law and build structures on top of the earth, never changing the weight of the earth nor altering the speed of the earth as it moves at the speed of 1,000 37 and one-third miles per hour on its way around the sun, making four dips in and out, giving us the change of our seasons. But the change didn't happen without a force. And the force that is producing the change, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, is the presence of the light of the sun. Yes, sir. It is the power in the light mm. that strikes the earth at its equator mm. that causes the earth to spin. Mm. And as it spins, it makes change. Yes, yes, sir. And it brings us up out of it and it keeps on spinning and spins us right back into it. And so it has been for billions and trillions of years. So if we want a change in our lives, light must be present in order to bring about change. So the scripture says, the people that walked in darkness, gross darkness, the people. And as long as we are in darkness, there will be no change. But when light comes, Light will bring about motion, yes. and it is motion that will bring about change. Tonight, brothers, in our short time together, I would like, by the grace of God, to show each of us why we are brothers in the very deepest 
sense of the word. Right. Yes, sir. I am your brother. You are my brother. Yes, sir. Yes. But not just brothers from the same womb. Come on. Yes, sir. It is even deeper than that. It's more profound than having the same mother. I'm going to get to this change and this light and all of that in a minute. But I want to talk about who we are in relationship to one another. Those who are watching this by television. The reason we permitted you to film this is because we don't want you to think that we're here raising an army <laughs> it doesn't matter what I say, they're going to think that anyway. <laughs> But we're not here trying to raise an army to create more hell. But if anything, if we could create an army of salvation that would save our communities across this nation, that would not only benefit us, but it would benefit America as well. So don't be afraid when you see black men coming together. I know, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you know, brothers, they think just like the scripture says they would think. Yeah. Go ahead. Pharaoh was just excited because he had treated the children of Israel so badly. He feared their multiplication. Right. Yes, sir. That they might join on to an enemy. That's right. And come against him. You know, they think like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they think we are some vindictive group of people yes. that can't wait to get back at them <laughs> for the evil that they have done. And so Pharaoh, out of his fear, set up a plan mm -hmm. to kill all boy babies. Right. Right. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that the deliverer might be destroyed for the children of Israel. Yes, sir. The plan was spare the female, but kill the males. Mm. Go ahead. In America today, we see that same mindset in operation. Spare your women and our women become like booty. Booty is the prize of war. And our women were the prize of war after the manhood of black men was conquered and enslaved. So today, in the time of our universal rise they don't wish to see you reclaim your woman reclaim her respect and honor for us as men so the idea is kill the black male kill you how kill you mentally by destroying any avenue by which light may enter your mind. Kill you spiritually by enforcing false religious doctrines that makes you think of a heaven too high, a hell too low, 
a God too far away and a devil too close. <laughs> so intellectually, mentally, spiritually, we as men have not been able to gather ourselves to make a change in our lives and to forge a way for our women and children. But after tonight, by the help of Almighty God, with what we give to you of knowledge, you will be able to make a change for yourself, make a change for your family, make a change for our community, and make a change for our nation. Now, let's go back to our brotherhood. Who are you? Who are you? Who are we? Yes, you say I am a black man, but it's deeper than black. The blackness of you is the external. The real person is the internal. The real person is the unseen reality right. yes. that moves what you see. That's right. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. In the Quran, which is the book of scripture of the Muslims, in the fourth chapter, it reads like this In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. O people, Keep your duty to your Lord who created you from a single essence and created its mate of the same kind. And from these two spread many men and women. I want to stop right there. Oh people, keep your duty to your Lord. Stop. Every human being instinctively knows he or she has a duty to a higher power. Even if you say you don't go to church, you don't go to the mosque, you don't necessarily believe in religion as it's been taught. Instinctively, you know that you have a duty. Before a duty to your mother, your father, your wife, or your children, instinctively you know you have a duty to a higher power. Prove it, Farrakhan. Sure. It's, it's written in the Quran. Allah puts it like this. He said, a man is on a ship. And when the winds yes. Right. Yes, sir. toss the ship about, yes, sir. each man makes his prayer sincere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Whenever you get in real trouble and you know being black in white America, we stay in real trouble. <laughs> but when you get in real trouble, you make your prayers really sincere. <laughs> I mean, you call him. You don't know his name, maybe, but you know somebody. <laughs> Whoever you are that created everything that I see in me too. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Look at here. I'm perfect. And I mean, you get down with this prayer. And then you say, Lord, if you get me through this one thing. Huh? 
How many of us have said a prayer like that? But I didn't finish. I didn't finish. You make a bargain, right? If, if, if you get me through this, this one time, what do you say? I, I, I'll serve you. I, I, for the rest of my life, I, I get myself together. And the scripture says, and lo, yeah. When we get him safely right. to shore, yes, sir. Yes, sir. he sets up other gods yeah. beside me. Yes. Surely man is ungrateful. Yes. <laughs> so since each of us know that we have a duty to a higher power, the power that created us, look, from a single essence yes, sir. well what is that single essence since the Quran says Kul huwe Allahu ahad, say he Allah is one he's single he's incomparable he's unique he's matchless there's none like him but from that single essence what is the single essence oh. It is God himself. So you are not just my brother from my mother. You are my brother because the single essence that created your life and my life is the originator of all life. So he created a, from a single essence the male. And from that same essence, meaning himself, he created its mate of the same kind. And from these two, he spread many men and women. Coming out of two, you have over five billion on the earth today. Oh, that's heavy stuff. So now look, family. This is family. No matter the height, the shape, the color, we came from a single essence. And that essence is God himself. So the nature of you is the nature of God. What is God's nature? God's nature is Islam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the 30th chapter of the Quran, it says, set your face for religion. Being upright, the nature in which God created man. It is his own nature and he gave man his nature. So your nature is divine. Man. Since God is the author of all things. Yes, sir. His nature is divine. Then you... And you, and you, and you, and you, and you Listen. are divine in your essence. Yes. Now then, if you are divine because you come from God, and your woman is divine because she comes from God, and he puts between the woman and the man love and compassion yes, and a magnetic attraction not between the male and the male that's right But between the male and the female. And he put in her heaven, yes. consolation, yes. comfort, yes, sir. quiet of mind, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. and peace yes. for the man. Right. That's right. 
and he put in the man that which makes the man the head the natural head of his house the Quran says he made the male a degree above the female this is not teaching male supremacy. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Well, we, we are all equal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you tell that to somebody that doesn't understand. There's no such thing as equality in the universe from the tiniest atom of yes. dust yes. all the way to the far planets they are not equal but the thing that makes all things equal is the law under which they are created can i give you an example yes, sir. You give me a pen and give me Give me a, a book or something heavy that you may have. No, I got a pen. I, I, ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna throw it down. Break it up. <laughs> Thank you. Now these two things are not the same size, shape, or color. This seems a, a little heavier than this. So when I drop it, you would think that the heavier thing should hit the ground first, right? But it ain't so. Because when I drop it, I drop it into a law. And the law renders these unequal things equal. Now watch. I drop them together. Did they hit it at the same time? Well, the law then renders all things equal. In order to come here, we came under the law of birth. In order to leave here, we leave under the law of death. You could be white, black, rich, poor, holy, unholy, don't make any difference. You come through birth. Yes, sir. And no matter what your station in life is, death catches all. Equality. Now, God has made some things to excel others. He has made, according to the Quran, some prophets to excel others. He makes some men to excel others. This is why if you run track, Everybody doesn't reach the finish line at the same time. That's right. Somebody wins the race. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody don't hoop the same. Everybody don't play the same. Everybody doesn't sing the same. But the beauty of the creation is all stars don't give forth the same degree of light. But what makes them beautiful is the constellation. This smaller one, this larger one, this one of lesser light matched with this one of greater light. That's what makes beauty. So, but each one of us are from God. Some have more of this and less of that. But each one of us has something that the creator gave to you that makes you unique and special. Do you understand that? Now, all right. The Quran says that the male is a degree yes. above the female. Yes, sir. So both the Bible and the Quran give the male not only the right but the authority to be the head of his house. Yes, sir. But in order to be a head, you got to have a head. <laughs> and 
And the thing that creates so much violence in the home is because we don't have the wisdom in the head to rule the house, but we have the instinctive understanding that we're supposed to be the boss. Now that's a heck of a thing. Yes. Yes. You don't have the wisdom to be the boss, Come on. Yes. but your nature's telling you you are the boss. Yes. Now check this out. You see these beautiful brother police officers here. Yes. The style that they have on represents authority. Right. Right. And what they wear <laughs> gives them the right to enforce their authority on those who disrespect it. Now the officer may come, he may not be kind or sweet. All right, move up the corner. I remember the, the hardest kick I ever got in my backside was from a brother, I won't call his name, but I love him. He was a police officer. And he laid that foot on my back because I didn't move fast enough. <laughs> but, you know, he had rights. I had rights. <laughs> but he had authority. <laughs> and there's a difference. We all got rights, but somebody has to have authority. Ooh. Now the police knows he's in authority. So when he says something, if you wolf on him, he said, now this man is questioning my authority. Now he's got to show you who is really in authority. And of course he calls for backup in case. Your wife got rights. You got rights. But instinctively, you know you got a fire. So you raise your voice. Look. And she comes back. Look, look, look. And you start living in her mouth like a dentist <laughs> to try to enforce your authority. So there's a whole lot of wife beating going on. There's a whole lot of violence in the home yes, going sir. on. Yes, sir. It's because you're stressed out as a man right. in a white society. Yes, sir. When nobody respects you as a man. The dog doesn't even come when you call. So when you get home, you just say, give me a little R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Or I'll bust you in your... But brother... The stress level that we function at yeah. makes us violent when we don't intend to be. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Easily upset. Right. That's right. And we sometimes, oft times, hurt the ones that we love the most. That's right. That's right. When I was a young boy in Roxbury, we would fight. And usually every young man carried a knife. But we never carried guns. Some of us had a pistol. But the majority of us had a little switchblade. Which was not unlawful to sell. But illegal to carry. I don't quite understand how 
Unlawful for us to gamble, but it's legal for them to sell us the crap. <laughs> Give the dice. <laughs> White folk are making a modern slave plantation from the prison system. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If 24% of the prison population or 24% of young black men are either in prison or under some form of court supervision. That's a lot of men. Prison building is big business now. So they're building more and more and more prisons. For who? America has become the largest incarcerator of human beings in the world so when they put you away three strikes and you're in for 26 years to life then they got you for the rest of your days to work for three or six cents an hour which is modern slavery in the name of criminal justice. Right. Now brothers, if you and I are from the same essence and that essence is God, then when you see your brother, you are looking at a manifestation of God. Yes, yes, yes. This is why Jesus said, how can you, or, or one of the apostles said, how can you love God whom you have never seen and hate your brother whom you see every day? I see you, you see me. I know who I'm looking at when I look at you. Yes, sir. That's why I tell my brothers, be respectful yes, sir. Yes. of every human being. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I see you, brother, I know I'm looking at a manifestation of divine, of God himself. One of his manifestations. I don't have to wait to see God to bow. I bow when I meet you. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that we should call one another brother. brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when we speak to one another, we should speak with respect. Yes, yes sir. That's right. No, sir. Yes. Who are you talking to? That's Every right. time I talk to you, I'm talking to my commanding officer. Right. You don't know you're my superior, but I know who you are. Right. So I'm, res I'm responsible to act in accord with what I know. You are my superior in many respects and I am your res superior in some respects. Do you understand? Each one of us is a manifestation of God. So, when the brother calls you brother, don't say, hey, don't call me a brother. My mother ain't never made nothing ugly like that. When you look at your brother sitting next to you, standing around you, look at him with a new vision now. Yes. 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 Say, whoa, I'm looking at a manifestation of God. Check this out. Jesus came into the world he was a very unusual being. And the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, would you teach us how to pray? And he said, pray on this wise. Our Father, stop. He didn't say, 
my father but not yours if my father made me Jesus and he's your father too then you and Jesus are brothers because he who has the same father is a brother yes sir so when you shoot your brother when you cut your brother and see your brother's blood when you drive by and you shoot indiscriminately and a baby dies innocently because of our madness you're killing a bit of yourself as well as a bit of God yes, sir. and you are making yourself an enemy of God who came to put a stop to the killing and who came to make us brothers yes. of one another yes. so the honorable Elijah Muhammad Recognizing that we didn't know how to treat one another, he said, put away the gun. Right. That's right. That's right. He disallowed us to carry so much as a pen knife. Do you know why? Because the moment you get angry, That's right. you reach, not here, for some intelligence to solve a problem, you reach for whatever's in your pocket. That's right. And in passion, you destroy a human life. Yes. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, put your weapon down. Right. In fact, he told us, get rid of your guns. That's what he said, right. Right. get rid of them. None of these carry right. a weapon. No, we don't, that's right. We won't carry a gun, brothers. We have patrols that patrol some of the roughest project houses in America yes, but we will not go to our brother with a gun in our hands because we know who you are we respect you and we love you and we came from you and we will never throw off on you Dear officers, in order to get respect, you have to give it. That's right. Give it. These are not savages. Yes, sir. These right. are men yes, sir. of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. I went to a prison one day, and I went up on a on a block that they called Death Row because everybody on that block was there for the rest of his natural life with no chance of parole. When I went up on the block, I said, I would like to go in and talk to the brothers. They said, no, you talk to them from this side. I said, brother, I can't talk to my brothers in a cave? Right. That's right. Listen. Let me go in. He said, I would not advise you to go in there. <laughs> and he's a brother, I mean, he had muscle. He was thick, huge. Yes, sir. And I looked like a little lamb, and he swore they were going to eat me up right. in there. I said, brother, I have to go in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He hit a button. And the big gate opened. He hit another button and the cell doors opened. Just like you were in a zoo. And the men filed out. There were about 12 black, three Hispanic, and two white. They all came out. And when you saw them file out of the cells, it was like watching a panther or a leopard or a lion come out. You know how a man is when he's caged. Yes, sir. 
And they came out. They had heard of Farrakhan. I said, brothers, I want to talk with you. Let's get some chairs and sit in a semicircle. They went, they got a chair, and I got one. And they sat around me. And I began to teach them. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me that if you put the right word in a person's ear within 500 seconds or 8 minutes and 20 seconds, you'll see a change come over the person. He said this, the light of the sun traveling at the speed of 186,000 miles per second that is 93 million miles from the earth takes 500 seconds or 8 minutes and 20 seconds to strike the earth and he said the blood traveling from the heel to the head and back to the heel again takes that same amount of time yes, sir. and if you put the right word containing light and power and energy in the ear That's right, Lord. Ma'am. Lord. as the blood courses through the brain it picks up the electrical energy of the truth that has entered the ear and all of a sudden it goes through the body energizing the whole body and within eight minutes and 20 seconds you look at the person you see a change in that individual within 10 minutes i called the god i said look at them yes sir and he looked there was light in their faces yes sir I said, these are animals. That's right. These are human beings That's right. that have been deprived yes, of the light of knowledge. Yes, sir. That have been deprived yes, sir. of the light of knowledge. Yes, sir. You are not animals. That's right. Yes, sir. You are human and divine beings who have been deprived. Yes, sir. Of the light of knowledge. That's right. And as long as nobody comes to you to bring you that kind of light, there will never be a change in your life. That's right. College will not give it to you. Listen, professor. I don't care how many degrees you got. No college degree transforms human life. That's right. Yes, sir. You got knowledge, but the effect of it is a knowledgeable Negro. That's right. A knowledgeable black man who does nothing productive. Yes, sir. We don't need just that kind of knowledge. We need that kind of divine knowledge that brings about a transformation in human life. I'm almost finished, brother. The reason you're in this condition has nothing to do with you. The enemy wanted to reduce the black man to a powerless people who would prepare surely be under his foot that's right you have become troublesome now because you don't want to be under his foot anymore but don't know how to get your own foot out of your own way so somebody has to help you the scripture says how can they know except they have a preacher and how can they have a preacher except he be sent follow me now yes. the thing that got you and me messed up is our powerlessness no man can be a man without power no man can exercise his authority as a man without power 
no man in this world can have power and not have money. If you don't have money in this world, you don't have power. Therefore, no man can be a man with just knowledge and no money. Knowledge must lead you to money. And then money will lead you to good homes and friendship. And money will enable you to do for yourself and your wife and your children what you know you should do as a man. That's right. But without money and without knowledge and without power, you become a madman. So I saw a black brother on television the other day. He had shot up somebody in a carjacking. And the white reporter was asking him, how did you feel? Think about that. He said, when I had the gun in my hand, I felt invincible. That's a heavy statement. Yes, yes sir. That gun gave him a sense of real power. He felt that if he went up to another man and said, give it up, that man would give it up. And then he could pump lead in him and watch him give up the most precious of all gifts, his life. That's right. I'm bad. I got power. I got a gun. Who gave you the gun? And what's more important, why did he give you the gun? When you know that the enemy has never wanted to see black men armed, why not? Are arms so prevalent in the black community? Yes. Let's talk. You don't have power, you want power. You don't have power, you want to access power. So power then to some. As Mao Zedong said, power grows out of the barrel of a gun. Wrong, Mao. Come on, tell me. Wrong. That's wrong. right, wrong. But since you don't know where real power comes from, somebody put a gun in your hand and you feel, damn. Right, yes, sir. I got power. Yes. Let me go try this out. Mm -hmm. Who you gonna try your power out on? See, you don't go into South Boston and try out your power. There's no drive-by shootings in South Boston or East Boston or Roslyn Dale. Come on. There's no drive-by shooting in Newton. But there's drive-by shooting in Roxbury. Drive-by shooting in Dorchester. Why? Because you have never been trained to use your power against those who deprived you of it. Right. You're just trying out your power on your own neighbor, your own brother, your own family member. Who put the guns in your hand? You know you can't go to a gun store. Most of us in this room have been arrested for something. Is that right? So you can't go to a gun store. You can't go to the gun store and say, hey, I want a 45, I want an AK. I want a... They say, what's your name? Forget my name. <laughs> They put that name in the computer and say, you better get out of here. <laughs> so most of the guns that you have are illegal weapons, which automatically gives the authority of the police when they find you with an illegal weapon a chance to put you away for five years That's right. if they wish to. And if it's involved with a violent crime, you know how much more time is added to that 
So here they got slave labor. They had your great grandfather. Right. He working from camp C morning to camp C night. Some slave master tell him, get up. That's right. Lay down. Come on. What? That's right. Now you got somebody saying, I'm right. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Roll call. Yes. By the numbers. You're a slave again. Yes. A powerless slave again. Brothers, let me hasten because I don't want to keep you long. <laughs> they put the gun in your hand to set up the black community for the bigger gun. They want to give you a sense of power so you will terrorize your own community. It makes it very hard for me to teach black people to love one another when it's my brother who's breaking into my house, carjacking me, drive-by shooting, selling dope to my child, trying to put my daughter out on the block. You can't love people who do that to you. So hate is multiplying in the black community. Us against us. So the women are sick of it, burying their sons, burying their children. So they're crying out, can't you send the National Guard in? Don't you ever think that the police don't have firepower to deal with this. They not only have enough firepower to deal with this, they have the backup of the National Guard and the federal troops. So what is, what is the black community being set up for? Look at the movie, Boys in the Hood. The black brother who made it, he didn't make it for evil purposes. He made it to show the reality of life in the hood. Yes, sir. But that went all over the world. Yes, that's right. And people in foreign countries are saying, is this right. what's going that. on in America? Think about that. Then you came out with menace to <laughs> society. <laughs> you went to the movie. I saw it, but I'm going to tell you what I saw. I saw us being set up for a genocidal attack. I saw us with our craziness. We went in the Korean store, shot up the merchant, huh? yes, sir. and laughed at what we were doing. <laughs> Then I saw that played out on television in real. It wasn't a movie now. A brother goes in a Korean store jewelry, pistol whips a Korean woman, knock her down. Take the jewelry. Then as he's leaving, he reaches over the counter and squeezes all rounds into it. This is going all over America. All over the world. You are being seen as an animal. You are being seen as a savage. You are being seen as a people unworthy of life. They're setting you up. So that when the tank Huh. and roll through Roxbury you and your little pea shooter what you gonna do with your little Uzi right. and an armored personnel carrier rolling down the streets helicopter gunships above your head pulling the plug on your gas and your electricity you wanna fight Go ahead, go ahead. 
you like blood? Go ahead. Well, maybe the enemy will give you so much of your blood, you understand why you need to stop the killing and learn how to love and respect yourself. The movie was called Menace 2. Well, if you John the second, who's John the first? If we are Menace 2, who's Menace 1? Menace 1 is white men who have dominated the planet and been a menace to the darker people of the world. Raping, robbing, pillaging, killing, wherever he has gone, menace one. Is he your example? Is he a man you want to pattern yourself after? Is he? I didn't hear you. A little louder. Why then do you call him the man? You didn't say he was a man, you said he is the man. When you use the definite article the, you make the man the example, the original, the, the, the thing that you model after. He is not the man for me. He's not the man for you. He's not your originator. So the one that should be the man to you, the model for you, the guide for you, is he who created you. All right. I want to wrap this up. In the Bible, Moses and the first five books of the Bible are called the books of Moses. The Genesis means the birth of the beginning. We now have come to our Genesis, our beginning. But what was it like, Moses, in the beginning? And why was Moses a liberator talking to his people about a Genesis and use these words? Listen, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God, on the spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light and he saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness and one part he called day and the other part he called night i'm asking the question why was moses a liberator talking to the children of israel about the genesis or the beginning of creation if you are at your Genesis, then a modern Moses has to come and talk to you like Moses talked to the children of Israel. Listen. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. 
Look above you, brothers. The heavens above and the earth work as a team. If they don't work together, life doesn't come up out of the earth because the heavens have to be lit in order for the heaven and the earth to work together. Yes, sir. But the scripture says God created the heavens and the earth, but the earth was without form and void. Right. How many of you have ever seen a check that was void? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing happening. Non negotiable. You can't, can't use it. Now God created the heavens and the earth, but the earth is without form and void. Do you know what gives form? It's motion. Motion. So if there's no form, there's no motion. If there's no motion, there's no light. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. What does it mean, brothers? God created heaven and earth. God created mind and body. The mind is the heaven of the body. And the body is the earth because it is, it is made from the earth. Look at your skin. It's like any leaf of a tree with pores. In it. Look, at the, look at the pores. Look at the veins and look at a leaf that has veins in it. The blood goes through the veins giving life to this. And so does the sap and the energy go through the veins in the, in the leaf to give it life. You're from the earth. The vegetation of the earth gives you your body. The stone of the earth gives you your bone. But the brain is the heaven of your body. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. But the earth is without form. Look at you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You are without form. And you're void as a people. You're like a canceled check. Nobody cares about you. Nobody can use you. You're dead. Come on. Voided. They don't know what to do with the black man. You know it. They don't know what to do with you, brother. So they've decided, many of them, if we let these cats live, if they just keep multiplying, right, right. By the year 2086, yes. the demographers are saying that at our present birth rate and their present birth decline we could be the majority population in less than a hundred years do you know what that means if blacks become the majority hispanics close behind and there's any kind of alliance between the black and the hispanics then run jesse run ain't no no talk you can run anybody you want to run and put them in and run the show, run the government, run the house, take over the house. White people see this. They don't want to see black people take over what they feel they've built, stolen, and work hard to maintain. So you're being set up for death and destruction. And to those who are watching by television, this is not um, some fanciful conspiracy theory <laughs> of some neurotic person. That's right. We've seen your work in Africa. We've seen your work in Central and South America with the native population. We know that you decimate populations that you feel are in your way. We see what you did to the Native Americans. 
when you send blankets to them with smallpox in the blanket to kill men, women, and children. We know what they're capable of doing. That's right. So the only way, brothers, you can save your life is to show that you can be useful to yourself and come up out of the condition that 400 years of slavery and injustice has put us in as a people. Yes, sir. Let's go back now. Avoid. Without form, you're not formed into the beautiful and magnificent people that you could be, you're without form. And the reason you're without form is because darkness is upon the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's right. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Moses was a man drawn out of water. That's right. What it is saying is once God's spirit begins to move on the face of the masses of the people, out of the masses comes a human being whom God fits out with divine light. So the Bible says arise and shine for thy light is come. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Yes. Now, here you are without form and void. God says, let there be light. And there was light. Once you produce a head, a leader with intelligence, then the leader begins to speak truth and organize the body. The body cannot come into existence without the head. That's right. yes, sir. And that's why the enemy has destroyed every great leader that we produce so that we will never be organized effectively as a people. You got it? Now, your light has come. Your light is come. And now you are rising up to that light. Yes, yes, so now change is coming. Yes, sir. Look at the men and women that I teach. That listen. Yes, sir. Look at the change in their lives. Yes, sir. The change in their manner. Yes, sir. The beautiful form that they're coming into. Yes, sir. This is not a miracle that only can take place with them. It's for you. But you got to accept truth. Yes, sir. And then you got to be willing now to conform That's right. yes, to yes, the sir. majesty and the dictates of truth. Yes, sir. And each one of us has accepted to be disciplined. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I threw away my cigarette. Right. Yes, sir. It was hard to do. I threw away my reefer. <laughs> yeah, I don't want nobody to think I fell down from heaven. I rose up out of hell with the rest of my family. I used to smoke reefers in Boston. And I knew where to get them. And I wonder why the police didn't know, but I guess they did know. <laughs> Some of my friends were into heroin and coke, but I said, no, I ain't going there. I always wanted to be in control. And when I got high a few times, I recognized, you know, this don't feel right. I got so high one day, I was playing at Louis Lounge. And, and uh, I couldn't remember whether I had sung a chorus or a chorus and a half. Because that reefer 
mess up your ability to measure time and distance. And anything that messes up my ability to measure time and distance, you know, I really didn't want to be bothered with that. But I had to try it. You know, the first time I heard Elijah Muhammad, I went to the mosque with my hat and I knew that they searched me, so I put my reefer in the hat band. <laughs> and they searched real good, but they didn't find my stuff. Because yeah. I figured after I heard Elijah Muhammad, I'd have to come out and get my head tight. I didn't know <laughs> that he was going to tighten my head all the way up where I would throw my stuff away after I got out the mosque. But what I'm saying to you brothers is you can make the change. That's right. It's not a hard change to make. God will help every one of us make the change because he desires you to make the change. Yes, sir. It's your time now. That's right. And you are holding up the rise of our people yes. with your and my foolishness. Yes. Yes. You are in the way of your rise, brother. Listen. The white folk cannot hold you back. If you don't hold yourself back, it's over. Right. Once you wake up, you can determine where you want to go, how fast you want to get there. It's all in your hands. Check this out. He said, let us make man. Now that's heavy, brother. He didn't say, let's make niggas. <laughs> let's make some colored people. He said, let's make a man. How are you going to make him, God? In my image. And after my likeness. That's how I'm going to make him. And that's how you are. Then he said, I'm going to breathe into him and he will become a living soul. And then he said, give the man dominion and power. And then he told the man, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. You're not a man without rule. You're not a man without power. You're not a man without the ability to multiply, not just from the sperm, right. Right. but to multiply in this way. You are given the gifts. You come into a universe that is to serve you. So when you multiply what you know with what is here, you produce a product. That's right. That's right. Every man by nature is a producer yes, sir. and any man who is not producing is a man that is dissatisfied with himself yes, listen brothers listen for you to work for somebody else who's producing mr so-and-so downtown that's his vision i need you to pull out the trash I need you to do well it's a job but it ain't what you're here for take it as long as it will allow you to feed your family without resorting to crime but always remember that you will never be the man that you could be until you become a producer and you know what brothers the whole aim of the government in white America is to keep you without power and dominion. And the reason they're so upset that Farrakhan wants to talk to black men, they act as though we're doing something wrong. If I were Johnny Gill, who is my wonderful little brother yes, sir. 
Johnny had a concert for women only. The law said nothing. <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass had a concert for women only. Listen. Nobody said nothing. <laughs> but I come to want to talk to black men, but all of a sudden I'm offending some law. What law am I offending to talk to black men? brother comes from knowing power brother comes from knowing and then uniting with others who know power comes from pooling your resources brother power comes from developing what you have of your gifts and using it for the betterment of yourself your family and your community that is what power is first knowledge once you accept the knowledge clean up your life brothers stop giving the whiskey merchant your money stop giving the dope dealer your money it's all right to have air jordans on but to pay eighty dollars Sometimes it's over a hundred dollars right. for what we call sneakers in our day, and they still sneakers today. <laughs> they ripping you off, brother. <laughs> they got designer pants, designer jeans, designer this, designer that. And if you don't have the means, you know how you do. You rip somebody off for the jacket, for some shoes. This is insanity, brothers. Let me show you what we could do with just the men in here tonight. We got some dead presidents here. Look, brothers, in truth. You see your community, you have Koreans, you have Arabs, you have other ethnic groups in your community, providing us with our goods and services, taking the money from our community out to build their communities, leaving our communities weak and underdeveloped. It's not the Arabs' fault. That's right. It's not the Koreans' fault. That's right. You say they ought to respect us. That's what they, they need to respect us. <laughs> well, they would if you showed some respect for yourself. That's right. You don't allow people to respect you because you don't do what commands respect. Come on. We got enough intelligence in the black community that we should be able to provide our community with everything that our community needs and keep the money revolving in our own community. Look, brothers. There's about 2,000 or more of us in here and if we just trusted somebody enough, which is a big thing, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. to put $20 in their hand, 2,000 times 20 is how much? $40,000. That ain't bad. Go to a bank up here. With forty thousand dollars, they got some property yes. in their portfolios 
that they're closing or have foreclosed yes, on yes, that we could pick up. We could begin rehabbing, right. putting people to live in it. Yes, sir. Take the rent, put it back in our right. account. Right, right, right. Right. Come back again, pool again, 40 more thousand. Yes. Pool again, 40 more thousand. Yes. Then set up a supermarket and make sure that every one of our families shop right. with their own. Keep the money in your own circle. Pool again. Buy some more property. You got carpenters in here. You got electricians and tradesmen of every kind. And you got young people who don't know anything about a trade. Put the young brother with the older brother. Teach the young brother to trade. Go in and fix up the property. Lower the rent and put your people in it. Keep the rent. Put it back in your treasure. Come back together again. Put another couple of dead presidents together. Say, all right, brothers, we need to go to the earth. Because the earth is the source of all of our life's sustenance. Yes. God got the floods in the Midwest. Farmers want to get out. Put your money together. Everybody buying up America except you. Right. You buying drugs. Yeah. You buying alcohol. Yes. You buying foolishness. Yes, right. His CBS was for sale yes. just a few years ago. With just some of the money that we put in drugs, we could have bought CBS. Right. Then you wouldn't have to be going to see Schindler's List. Somebody talking about somebody else's Holocaust. Right. But you could then put your own story on your own television. Right. But you are so disorganized, powerless. <laughs> Look at the farm. We could own thousands of acres of farmland just from pooling a little of this. Get on the farmland. You say, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. But you ain't sowing no wheat. No way. You waiting for tip top and wonder and wonder when it's coming. <laughs> but if you and I would pool our money, we could plant a wheat seed and harvest it. Yes. Turn the wheat into flour and turn the flour into bread yes, yes. and then send bread into all the major cities oh, yes, yes. eat the black man's bread yes, yes. eat bread that's wholesome and clean yes. without all of these degenerative things yes. in the bread yes, yes. on your farm you set up a canning factory and you begin to pull your peas and your corn and your asparagus from the ground in your cannon and then you put your own product on your shelf in your supermarket across the country yes. then we eating from our own pea right. first baptist pea yes. <laughs> muslim corn go to raising your own chickens have land for your cows and your sheep no pigs sheep and cows to graze set up your dairy put your ultra modern dairy together and milk your cows and send the black man's milk into the black community stock your shelves and instead of a white face on it put your face on it yeah. and we go and eat our own milk eat our own bread eat from our own canned products raise our own chicken and the billions of dollars that we spend for food with the merchants of death that money goes back in our own pockets right. then you take the hide from the cattle and you make your own shoes. Yes, yes sir. Mm, mm, mm. Uh -huh. Then you buy you a fishing trawler. Yeah. And you go out on the high seas and you fish. Yeah. 
like the Japanese are doing. Right. You can do what you want to do, black man. It's your day. You might as well get the vision. Stand up and let's go for it like real me. You gotta set up your own schools. These schools are killing fields. Killing your babies like they killed you and me. But if you either take them over or set up your own, then you put teachers in there that love black children and know how to teach and train black children. Then you set up your own hospital. Much cutting and shooting as you do, you should have your own. But of course, of course, we're gonna cut that out. But you should have your own hospital. And then the young men that are your warriors. And they protect what you build. This is our farm. This is our land. This is our trucking company. This is our radio station, our television station. This is our bank. This is our ship. And these are our soldiers protecting what belongs to our community. And after a while, after a while, your women, when they see you coming, that's my man. They'll honor us again, brothers. They'll respect us again, brothers. They'll love us like they used to in the yes, days yes, when we built kingdoms in yes, Africa. Yes, yes. They will love us again. Yes, and they will say to all the world, I'm proud yes, sir. to bear a child yes. Yes, yes, sir. for this mighty black man yes, yes, sir. that will continue yes. in his image and in his life. Yes, yes, this is not a pipe dream. No, sir. Right. Good, sir. Good program. Really. This can happen. Yes, sir. It is happening. Yes, sir. And it will happen more so. I want to come back to Boston. <laughs> Within a month. I know that the sisters want me to talk to them too. But I would like to have a second meeting with the men. Only we need to be in the arena. So that all the men that want to come can come. I don't want to keep you too much longer. But I want to close, I don't want you to rush for the door, but I want to close on this note. Brothers, God has blessed your brother from Boston who grew up in this city and went to school here to be loved by black people all over America and throughout the black world. That's right. Yes, sir. Brothers, for the first time in a long time, black people trust a black man. Yes. Black people know that I won't sell us out. That's right. Black people may not agree with everything that I say. But they know that I will be faithful to you and to our future. So when you see Time Magazine say that 
67% of black people see Farrakhan as an effective leader and 63% according to time say that they believe that I speak the truth and 70% say that I have a message for all of America to hear if you would trust me what I talked about tonight can become a reality. Listen, I don't live bad. I dress well. Wait, I ride well. But this is nothing. Yes, sir. This is nothing, brothers. I live in a home that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad built. It's a beautiful home. Yes, sir. But what good is it? That's right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me when I walked him into his home, he said, I will not be in this house with my foot propped up, enjoying the beauty of this yes. mighty fine home. But I'll be in this home thinking of how I can get all 30 million of our yes. people into homes like this. Listen. Elijah Muhammad told me before he departed from us how he wanted me to think and speak. And he said, don't think for some. That's right. And don't speak for some. Think for all. Yes. And speak for all. Yes, sir. And then he said, this is the way I want you to think. You've got 30 million people who eat three meals a day. And at each meal, they eat at least one slice of bread. So 30 million people eat 90 million slices of bread per day. 630 million slices of bread per week. 32 billion 760 million slices of bread per year. How much land must we have under wheat cultivation to give our people their daily bread? When you figure that out, that's the amount of bread land you go for. That's right. Then you think about the sheep and the cattle and the beef that people eat. How much beef cattle must you have? How much grazing land must you have? to feed your people, then clothe your people, then shelter your people. And for the first time, there's a black man that from the youth to the very elderly, yes. they have love and respect for that brother. Yes. Right. Oh, praise to Allah. It is not oratorical skill. That's right. That's right. But there's something between me and you. Yes. 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 Come on. Yes. That's more profound than a tongue. That's yes. right. It's the soul yes. of your brother. Yes, sir. Touching the essence yes. of God in you. Yes. Yes. That when you hear your brother, you know beyond a doubt. Even if you came just to see what he was going to say, and I don't like the nigga, but I'm going to hear him. Yes. You can't listen to me. Come on. And go away the same way you That's came right. in. Right. Even if you wanted to hate me, you end up loving me because you know that I am sincere. I talked to you for two hours. No notes, no way. And I could go on for two days, for two weeks, for two years and never repeat myself because something is inside. me for the honorable Elijah Muhammad and he made me for you now the enemy sees me clearer than you see me and they have determined 
because of the increased love that you have for me that I must die. I ain't worried. kill me themselves no. they want to incite it yes. Yes. from one of my own brothers yes, sir. Yes, sir. so that they could say well it was some internal problem right. Right. I would say to all of those who are listening via television or radio that's the most Dangerous thought yes, you could get. If you don't like Farrakhan, then leave me alone. But, but to plot against my life is to get your own life in trouble with God. I want to let you know, brothers, that if I were just Gene Walker, as I once was known, or Louis X, as I once was known, and there is no God with me, then I have nothing to say to you. And you have no reason to listen to me because God is the shepherd today yes, sir. Yes. but and if this is just some cult leader yes, then the government doesn't have to worry about right, me right. if I'm some racist bigot anti-semite hater the world doesn't have to worry about me right. Because all of those fellas have been assigned to the dustbin of history. Yes, sir. Yes. Good point. But I know that I'm not that. That's right. And you didn't come out here to hear me because you thought I was that. Right. One thing that white folks have to understand, black people know more about Farrakhan That's right. than you give them credit for knowing. That's right. That's right. I'm not a Johnny come lately. I've been working in the black community now for near 40 years. And so there are those in government, those among the Jewish people, and some of our own people out of envy, who would be very happy if some accident happened to Farrakhan. In the name of Allah, I want America. If you doubt that God is with me, bring your men of God out in the public. Anybody whom you think is close to God, bring him out. Go ahead. Go ahead. And let them pray for something. Come on. And let me pray for something. And if you want to test whether God is with me, then try me. been a black man in history that the white media has dumped on yes, yes. like they dump on fire yes, yes. This is, this but the more they dump on me the stronger yes, yes, yes. black people yes, get yes, yes. because they know if the media is dumping on me like that there must be something right about fire that's frightening the hell out of him
Go ahead. And I don't play with religion, and I don't play with your life and your destiny. Yes. You are sacred to me. So I'm going throughout America. Go ahead. Calling on black men. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That the future of our race and our nation is in our hands. Yes. Our women have carried the ball too long, too hard, and they have been both men and women while we slept. But it's time for the black man to wake up and stand up and take our rightful place. Are you ready? Yeah. You are? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Would you stand please? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you brothers to take a simple pledge. I want you to think about your pledge. Don't say it if you don't mean it. When I say I, and I say, say your name, you just say what your name is. And then repeat the words after me, and then I want you to think of the words as you say them. I, I. Say your name. Pledge, Pledge. To, learn to learn to love my brother, love my brother. As, I love as I love myself. Will you do that? Yes. You can't learn to love your brother as you love yourself unless you strive to know yourself better. So the second pledge is I, I your name, I pledge, pledge to strive to learn, strive to, learn to, improve myself, to improve myself spiritually, spiritually mentally, mentally, morally, morally economically, economically, and socially, and socially for the benefit of myself. Myself, my, family, my family and my people, and my people. <laughs> yes. that means that from this night you and I will strive to improve little by little day by day we try to make ourselves better you know why brother because once you make yourself a little better you make it easier for the man standing next to you to grow in love with you. Right. If I treat you right, you're going to love me. Good. If I treat you wrong, you're going to hate me. So if I improve myself, then I'll improve my relationship with you. And when the bond of love gets stronger and stronger, then there's no power that can stop us from doing what it is that we must do to help ourselves and our people. Pledge that from this day forward, I will never shed the blood of my brother or my sister except in defense of myself. I will never be the aggressor. But I will fight with those who fight with me. Think about it. I never want to shed your blood. I don't want to see you shed each other's blood. But if somebody aggresses you and you can't talk your way through this, right. you have to defend right. sure. the life that God has given you. Yes, you right. So you fight with those who fight with you right. until you overcome. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the more we teach like this, the less fighting you will ever That's see right. That's right. among our people. Brothers, that's a simple pledge. But if you go out from this building determined that from this night on you're going to see every black man and woman that you see. Oh, that's my brother. Yes. That's my real brother. Yes. And even if they act in the fool, come on, come on. Don't let that throw you. Right. That's right. He's just a fool on the surface. Yes, sir. But underneath, right. that's the God. Yeah. Yes. Right. You got to reach for the God and pull it out. Yes. May Allah bless you. Thank you for a beautiful evening. I love you. And before you leave, I want you to turn each other after prayer shake your brother's hand after prayer just shake each other's hand get to feel hug your brother this ain't no yeah. sister meeting yeah. <laughs>